Billy Shank, Tracy Stuckey, Travis Hi. Walker, Nikki Todd. Hi. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I've been wanting to interview you for a while. Is that a Billy Shank behind you? It is. Yeah, I thought this would be a good spot to. Oh, my, my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's so great. Um, so, Billy Shank, Travis Walker, Tracy Stuckey, I interviewed all of them, and you represent all of those, those artists. I thought that was funny. That it's so funny, but I think they all have this, you know, sort of quirky sensibility and a fresh take on on the West. And so, you know, that's where they all fit, you know, in the gallery here. Um, I didn't know you did you did an interview with Travis. I'll have to go back and watch that one. I watched the other ones. Travis Walker was my first interview because I actually know him. This this I this is a Travis Walker behind me. What? Yeah, it's a it's a wood like a a wood um, block. Oh, it's a print, huh? I yeah, would not have guessed that. Yeah, I didn't know who he was, and I I just he had thrown a party in this weird sort of space, and I just walked in, and I I, I wasn't even an artist at the time. I just saw the painting, and it was one hundred and fifty bucks, and I. <laughs> I love those kind of serendipitous, you know, great finds. That's cool. It must have been at the wallpaper show that they yeah, do. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Probably yeah. a decade ago, more than that. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Were yeah. you there? Pro I, you know, we might have been there. <laughs> Was it? It was in the old space, that kind of old garage, and it would get so crowded in there. It was, it was, yeah. His, you know, he sort of got this like Edward Hopper, but it's like twisted Edward Hopper. You know, um, it has that sort of quietness and stillness in the paintings. Yet there's just this. It kind of makes you look twice. Like, wait a minute, what's going on in this painting? Of you know, I love his RVs, the abandoned RVs that he always has in his paintings. So much, which are you know everywhere when you're driving around the west i'm sure you you've seen them and my husband and i was like travis walker and we'll snap a picture and text it to him he probably thinks we're crazy <laughs> he's like but, oh, thanks another rv thank you yeah <laughs> But yeah, he just captures this sort of weird weirdness of the West that, you know, a lot of people don't pay attention to or choose to ignore. And that's what I really love about his work. I think he's got a, you know, he looks at things that most painters don't look at. And he makes them, you know, kind of humorous, but yet there's still something sort of haunting and beautiful about them, about his paintings. How did the Tracy Stuckey exhibition go? Oh my God, it was amazing. I think it was just the right culmination, like the timing of people having been, you know, in, in quarantine for so long and then anticipating the show and the paintings were from his stay in Mexico. So it was sort of like you could vicariously live through the paintings and sort of feel like maybe you were in Mexico, but they were just amazing. Tracy Stuckey with just like, I always feel like he takes reality and romanticism and kind of puts them on this collision course. And you know, that didn't disappoint at all. It was, they were fantastic paintings, just really get to the heart of sort of, taking these big larger than life figures and you know just putting them out there the colors were um, really great i think his palette was great in this show but yeah most of the paintings are sold so <laughs> so we're very excited i think he's he's excited yeah congratulations the, yeah thanks i think a lot of people were worried about the art season kind of not you know people not buying art during all of this and and it, almost the opposite has happened. I know, you know, I didn't even really think about it when, the, you know, of course, like last March, we were all in panic mode and it was like, oh God, is the world going to end? Like nobody's going to buy anything ever again. And yeah, it was just the opposite. I think people have been spending so much time in their homes that they're looking at walls thinking, oh, I want this here. I want that there. So. The, hey, um, so you are, you are the owner or the director of, uh, I the, you know, both. I started the gallery, gosh, I mean, a couple of decades ago, I guess it's been now. I was in my mid-20s and living here in Livingston, and there was a space that was open, and there was sort of a framing shop gallery in it. And um, yeah, it just sort of all one of those crazy things that just kind of worked out. You know, it wasn't something that I, I've always been, like, my parents love the arts. My mom always took me to museums and 
art galleries, our family trips, mostly were like, okay, we're going to go see all the galleries first in town. So we'd do that wherever we went. So it's always a big love, but I just never thought I'd be a gallerist. But it just happened, <laughs> which is great because it, it definitely, I think, is, you know, my passion and what I would have loved to do. But I got a, a minor in art history in college, but I majored in biology thinking I'd go to vet school. But yeah, luckily this happened and and here I am you know 20 years later and it's been a, a fun journey you know we went my with my parents my first they purchased a piece of art from me they came to Montana I was going to college at MSU in Bozeman and we went literally this gallery was called the hole in the wall and it was over in NS Montana and there was this painter there Rocky Hawkins and we just my parents and I we fell in love with the work they bought me this small painting for my birthday and uh, the artist's wife was there and she said, oh, well, Rocky's in the back. Do you want to meet him? And so he came out and we just hit it off. And it, it's crazy to think that that was, you know, almost 30, not 30 years ago, but 25 years ago. And now I represent Rocky and, you know, he's been with the gallery for a long time and just has been a great, great friend, great artist, inspiring person. So did you, did you represent him as soon as you met him? Did you, is that how that No, because I was still in college. <laughs> I was still along, you know, I was a, definitely four or five years away from even maybe a little more from starting the gallery. So yeah, it was just that one of those serendipitous things where we crossed paths and then we kept, you know, you know, later after college, I'd keep buying his work because um, he actually had his own gallery for a little while. Yeah, just one day he called me up and he said, hey, Nick, I, I want to be in your gallery. <laughs> I was oh. like, you're kidding. I, I would love it. Yeah. Well, who, was the, who was the first? Who, how did you? So you were... You started your gallery in an, in a in a frame shop. Yeah, kind of. There was a woman that had like this frame shop, and um, you know, she had some art and books and things. And so I would get I would I used to do some photography a long time ago, and I would get my work framed there. And we got talking, and um, she kind of wanted out of the business. And I think her husband was a fishing guide in Florida, and they eventually ended up moving there. But that was sort of the the impetus. She was like, "Why don't you buy?" this from me <laughs> you can do whatever you want and I thought okay that's that that sounds good you know I knew really nothing about you know I the, with my parents I'd been and I'd seen a lot of galleries but I just you know I didn't really know anything about the gallery business I mean it's changed so much you know we didn't I think when I first started we would take actual photographs with a camera and get the film developed and put pictures in the mail to people you know and send them off and I remember the first time we actually sent an email with a jpeg of a piece of artwork <laughs> to a client and it was like revolutionary you know it's just like god is this really going to get to the client and you know and then like a, I don't know half an hour later the phone rang and the woman was like I'll take it I, it blew my mind I was like oh my god this is the start of a whole new era for galleries I mean we didn't even have websites really when I started that yes. was sort of like a, a new thing so yeah it's just it's amazing how the digital world has sped up our world so much more so since the pandemic it's just just like things that we never thought, places we never thought we'd sell art, like Instagram, or we get inquiries on Instagram regularly for people wanting to purchase art. And who, you know, I never would have guessed that in a million years. <laughs> but I think as the client base gets more comfortable with all these digital mediums, they feel okay seeing something on Instagram and buying it or inquiring about it. So that's really been sort of new for us, I think within the last year or two to really to really actually sell things on that platform yeah i thought it, it took me a while too and then you start getting messages and it's like oh oh this is really happening like instagram is yeah. really like that. <laughs> i was just paying for advertising to get followers <laughs> And then I was like, oh, this is a result. Um, yeah, it's a, it's just, it's kind of amazing. <laughs> so I, I was wondering about, so you, you're in Livingston, you're in Bozeman, you're in Denver. Yes, yep. And those are, yeah, those, we, we've been in Denver, um, I think 
11 years now, 11 or 12 years. And that's been a great market for us. We did that because we really just wanted to have a bigger, like more contemporary urban audience. And that's, it's worked well for us. You know, we were looking at a lot of places. And then one day I opened up, I think it was Art News Magazine. And there was a big article about the Denver art scene. And I looked at my husband and I said, wait a minute, you're from Denver. <laughs> That's where we should open a gallery. It's semi-close. You know, we won't be traveling across the country trying to run another gallery. So, and Denver's a great, there's a great art scene there. I think we hit the market there just as it was still kind of building and growing and seeing a lot of change there, but it's all been good. And, and people in Denver are friendly and it's e- an easy place to do business. The collectors there are great. So yeah, we love we love Denver. You know, there's a very contemporary group of collectors in Denver that have amazing collections. And then, you know, there's these people that have amazing classic Western collections. And there's still some people that, you know, like more of a subtle sort of, you know, they just want a painting of a cowboy. And and that's fine. But, you know, that's not what we do. We definitely look for, for people that are doing things that are relevant to the times we live in, you know, because the West is not the West of 50 years ago. It's not even the West, you know, Denver's not the town it was 20 years ago. So we like to support and represent present artists that have, you know, definitely more contemporary take on things and have a fresh voice. Well, it was, um, it was really good uh, meeting you. I, I hopefully we get to actually meet in person. Yeah, yeah. Well, let us know if you're up in uh, Montana or down in Denver. We'd love okay. to meet in person and, and hopefully we all get um, vaccinated soon and we can do that safely. <laughs> It was it was nice to meet you and thank you for doing this. This was exciting. Yeah, thank you. And I'll check out your artwork too. Okay, sounds good. Okay, bye. Bye.